Hi everyone, this is Ekaterina and today I'll be talking about boundaries within the counseling relationship. I'll explain what I mean by boundaries, why they are so important, what sort of benefits they have for the client and the counselor. And lastly, I will share with you a personal experience of a practical session that we had in college whereby we were testing each other's limits by facing clients that were very, very much pushing our boundaries. So I'll share with you my experience and what I've learned from that. So let's start by exploring the term boundaries. And I think when we first hear that word within the concept of counseling, it might have a bit of a negative feel. However, as I already mentioned in the videos uh, regarding counseling contract and what happens during the very first session between the counselor and the client, those discussions about the counselling rules, about the boundaries, they definitely need to take place. Because to put it simply, boundaries help us define the activities, such as counselling relationship, by creating a space within which those activities can take place. So to put it simply, boundaries help us create a clear structure to the counseling relationship where we can manage the expectations of our clients by letting them know in advance before they make the decision whether they would like to do counseling or not as to what they can expect from the counselor, what will happen during the counseling relationship and what are the expectations from both roles, the client and the counselor so that, for example, the client doesn't have wrong expectations that they will get advice when they're doing counseling, because counseling is different from mentoring or life coaching. So one of those things need to be defined and boundaries do that for us. And I think it's important to understand that when we talk about boundaries, there are actually two categories of boundaries. First of all, we can have professional boundaries. And secondly, we can have personal boundaries. So when talking about professional boundaries, what it means is all those kind of core rules that need to be set up definitely during the very first session. We're talking about confidentiality. We are talking about uh, how long the sessions will take, where exactly they will take place, how many sessions there will be. And it's not only defining the things that will happen within the counseling relationship, but also outside. For example, if the client meets their counselor in the supermarket, would the client wish to be acknowledged by the counselor, approached by them, or would they prefer the counselor to just mind their own business and not show any kind of recognition? So those professional boundaries are usually defined in a set of rules by the counselor's employer. Uh, if, for example, they are representing NHS, I'm sure NHS has a set of rules that that particular council needs to abide by. Also, if a council is a member of an ethical organization such as BACP, then they also need to abide by a set of guidelines. And all of those define those rules with regards to confidentiality and how to manage the structure of the counseling relationship. But there's also other professional boundaries that need to be taken into account. For example, we would expect the counselor to have sufficient training in order to work with the clients. And they also need to have a good understanding of their own limitations so that when they see that they are no longer able to support the client or perhaps not able to help them in a particular field, for example, addictions, they need to understand that they need to sign posts that a client to maybe a different organization or refer them to a different specialist. So all this does fall under the professional boundaries. Now, please also remember that the duty of maintaining those boundaries, making sure they are sustained, not only during the very first session with the client, but also a month from then or a year from then or for as long as that counseling relationship lasts, that duty mostly lies with the counselor. So they need to make sure that uh, the client remembers those boundaries, doesn't cross them. Um, for example, maybe a client starts the counseling session by arriving spot on on time, but as the time progress they start to maybe arrive a few minutes late, 10 minutes late, uh, cancelling the sessions with a very short notice. So it is up to the counselor to remind the client about the boundaries and the rules that have been agreed during their very first session. So we talk about the professional boundaries, well what about the personal boundaries? 
Well, these are our personal limits. They define what we find acceptable and what we really cannot handle, we cannot really accept. And again, just like with other boundaries, this is something that will be discussed during your first counseling session. Um, and this topic can also be brought up back throughout the whole relationship. So if you haven't mentioned something during your first session, don't feel like you've lost your only chance. And the things that we would consider under personal boundaries would be, for example, use of full language or raising your voice or being a bit touchy-feely. You know, in the end of the day, counselors are not our friends, so please do not expect to get a hug at the beginning of the session or at the end. I think I already explained previously, it is very, very rare that the counselor would actually give their clients a hug. It can happen if uh, the client is very much upset, but at the end of the day, you are still their client. The counselor is your counselor. It's not your friend. He is not a family member. And I think those boundaries, the discussion of the boundaries, again, helps us to define what can happen during the counseling sessions and what should certainly not be happening. Now, I'd like to also talk about the benefits of the boundaries because it probably still sounds like the boundaries only limit the counseling relationship by setting all those rules. But on the contrary, what they also do is that they bring consistency into the counseling relationship. So imagine having a client who is going through lots of changes in their life, maybe lots of sudden changes that they were not prepared for. So they have to deal with lots of emotions, maybe other people, work, kids, uh, colleagues, uh, partners. So to have at least once a week that one hour time slot uh, that is well defined and know when exactly is happening, where it will happen and what will happen as well that can be very empowering for some of the clients because that will be at the very least the only one hour or 50 minutes of their week when they know it's all about themselves, it's not about other people, it's not about managing other people's expectations, it's space for them to explore their feelings, their thoughts, and as I said, it is consistent. They know what to expect, they know that they will not hear specific things from the counselor, they will be not told off, they will be not judged, they will not be told what to do, and as I said, for some of the clients, this can be a very crucial time, something that we generally don't allow ourselves in our normal life, having that space where we can talk to somebody without getting, as I said, any opinions or advices. So boundaries help us create that space for the client. So please don't underestimate the boundaries and understand that they work for both the client and the counselor rather than against them. And finally, I wanted to tell you about the practical session we had in college, whereby we were testing our limits. Uh, so this is something certainly that I would recommend to do to anyone who is starting to become a counselor or a therapist. It's quite easy to organize, but it certainly teaches you a lot about your limits that maybe you were not even aware of. So in our case, our teacher asked us to split into pairs, and then we were told that when we play the role of a client, we really need to push any kind of specific boundary. We could choose which one we would like. Um, so we had to be very, very difficult clients for our um, fellow students who are playing the role of the counselor. So in my case, my client kept asking me for opinion and advice. They asked about six times in 10 minutes. And they were very creative in the way they were asking that. It started all kind of indirectly by saying, oh, I would like us to kind of look at what I could do in this situation. So um, the client was referring to we as opposed to I want to make that decision. And then they actually directly asked me, you know, what would you do in this situation? What would you do if you were in my place? Um, and finally, they also tried to ask how other of my clients would have acted in this particular situation they were in. So very creative from their side. Unfortunately, I found this boundary quite easy to sustain because this is something I have to deal with in my day-to-day -day life anyway. So I redirected their question. I also uh, reminded them about the boundaries we agreed during our first session. So I didn't find it maybe as challenging as I wished to, but I'm sure we'll have other experiences. So there'll be more practical sessions for the boundaries. 
from the discussions we had as a group, I found out that other students maybe found their situations a bit more challenging. Uh, they had clients who really wanted to become their friends. They wanted to give them gifts and meet up outside the session. As for me, when I was playing the client, I was that sort of client who is constantly on their phone. So I was checking messages, I was taking calls, I tried to call somebody, I also checked YouTube videos and I tried to show this adorable uh, video to my counselor. So I was really, really difficult client and they handled very well. Um, I think later they confessed that they actually really inside felt the anger, but they didn't show it on their face. They still remained professional. They remind me about the boundaries. So they were very much surprised what an impact it had on them. The fact that I was not paying attention to them and was on my phone. And I think this is the best learning from that experience, learning something about yourself that you didn't expect by actually playing out those sort of scenarios. So I said for anyone who is doing similar studies, make sure you ask other students to be a very difficult client. It's, it's a fun experience, but it also uh, helps us become more self-aware of what are our own limits and when do we feel comfortable challenging the client who is trying to push those boundaries. So I hope you enjoyed today's videos. As always, feel free to reach out by using the comments field, subscribe to the channel not to miss out any future releases. As for the next videos, I will be going back to ending the counseling relationship, going in a bit more detail as to what exactly happens during that uh, last session. As this year, we were certainly explained more than last year as to the steps that we need to take as a counselor. And I think it's also time for me to um, share with you another good book about counseling, uh, about mental health. So there will be another release coming up also in my mindful reading playlist. But for now, please remember to take good care of yourself and I will see you soon. Bye bye.